everybody. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Get Ready. And back with me again from down under, my good friend, Steve Wells, internationally recognized psychologist, leadership coach, and peak performance consultant. Good friend of mine. And <laughs> last time we, uh, we had a chat was just when we were starting to think, you know, we should do an event together. Let's do a two continent, four city event. And then the pandemic happened. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We got to go back to those plans, you know. We do. We do. It will happen. We, we will make it happen. But for now, we have Zoom. So welcome back to the show, Steve Wells. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, it's good, good to be back with a good mind. Yeah. So we had talked last, uh, last time we chatted about your book, which you can see over your shoulder, 100% yes. Strategically placed back there, you know, <laughs> a, a shallow marketing <laughs> Ploy. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? I'm 100% yes, about 100% yes. So, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, so we did these, we, we took our workshop online and called Tap Into Yes. And I did my version of EFT and you did your tapping protocol called Intention Tapping hmm. uh, or Intention Energy Therapy uh, Psychology. And uh, so tell us about that. Okay, so um, it's just something I discovered. And, you know, when people talk about intention, they usually are thinking about goals or affirmations or, or something like that. This is different. And these intentions that I discovered are different, primarily because they work. Like... Um, <laughs> Not that affirmations don't work for some people, but they don't work for most people the way that they promise on the box. Right. Um, and I tried, you know, for years I was doing this and, and um, I must have tried thousands and thousands of different types of intentions trying to change my life and trying to make myself better. And, you know, it's always just been a lifelong um, self-development track and I'm not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> really i was thinking you just about no, nailed no. it so that's what one guy came up to dave lake and i was like you guys must be just completely your lives must be just completely like we're like no this let's just give you the tip um there's always more to do it yes. doesn't matter who you are and i haven't met anyone who doesn't have more to do you know when we stop learning you know then uh, maybe that's when we're ready to evolve to the next level of uh right. you know whatever head off into the spirit world or whatever yeah no most of my great discoveries I, I was reflecting on this that most of the things i've discovered that have been helpful have been either at a time when i've been at, at my worst having you know a shocker of an experience in life or when i'm working with clients you know when i'm running programs and i'm working with people that that kind of uh, creative juices come out and so yeah some people talk about inspiration or desperation. It's kind of a little bit like it. <laughs> so intention tapping, you know, I knew tapping, uh, you know, we learned tapping with Gary Craig back in 1997. Dave, Dave Lake and I, my good mate, studied with him and, you know, spent 20 good years traveling around together. We simplified EFT to an approach we call SET. And that's the tapping that I use in intention tapping. So it's not EFT. It's not exactly the same as EFT. We use the same points, but there are a large number of differences. And we agreed with Gary Craig because he's like, you know, you can't call this the same thing because it's it's different. Um, and so with his blessing, you know, we we went off and created our own uh, thing. And um, but the intentions were in intention tapping were discovered when I, I basically I was trying to get back into doing some distance running and uh, while I running I've never been a runner I, I call myself a joker you know it, it, it's a cross between a jog and a walk right so, <laughs> <laughs> and it's more a walk than a jog so it's a joke um, but yeah you know, I wanted to get the distances up and um, and uh I had, you know, I'd previously done a single run of 35 kilometers when I was young and fit and healthy, 
And I wanted to go a little bit further, you know. Anyway, on this occasion, I was building up the amounts and I'd got up to about 28 kilometres in one go, which is not so bad for, in Australia, so not so bad for an old fart. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and But I, then I got this heel spur, okay, because clearly I was out of alignment, you know, I was injuring myself and the, anyway, so I ended up with a shocking heel spur and it just, it really, um, it really affected me, not just because it was painful to move and I couldn't get up off the couch. Um, it was just like, you know, you know, when one bad thing happens, sometimes it's like accumulated bad things happen. And so yeah. it wasn't so much that a lot of other bad things happened. It was just that I piled on to myself right. and got down on myself. And uh, this is just another aspect of a lifelong pattern that I now know that just about everyone else on the planet shares. And um, and so, you know, I was like, well, not only am I not moving, able to move here, I'm not moving forward in my business enough. I'm not forward moving, you know, I'm, I'm not a good enough father. I'm not a good enough husband, you know, and I was just, I was just depressed, little d depressed, not big d clinically depressed. But so I just like, I'm throwing everything I know at this problem. I'm tapping, I'm doing TRE, which is David Baselli's shaking technique. I'm uh, I'm using logosynthesis created by Willem Lammers, okay. like a lovely gentleman from from uh, uh, Switzerland, who's our good friend. And I'm also you know reading books and things, and I was also working with a marketing coach, Robert Middleton, lovely guy. And he had um, done, he was into non-duality stuff and he had put together a, a, what he calls the unstuck process. Uh, and um, it was based on a lot of non-duality teachers, including Byron Cady, who I, you know, I'd already um, studied some of her work. Mm -hmm. And so I picked up her book again. And in her book, there's a line that basically says, it's not the thought, it's the attachment to the thought that causes suffering. Right. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I know this. You know, it's the emotional attachment is what I prefer to call it. And so you have a thought, and because you have emotion attached to that thought, it upsets you. When you do tapping, now you can think the same thought. There's no emotion attached to the thought any longer. And so you think, think that same thought, it doesn't affect you. Right. But in that moment, I'm like, yeah, that's what tapping does. It releases the emotional attachment. Uh, but then I just had the insight, what if we could just use intention to release the emotional attachment? And I literally just formed the specific intention. I release all my emotional attachments to this problem. And I just felt this, ah, you know, like when you're doing tapping and you have the big sigh or you have the big yawn or you have the big shift that people do. And this was equivalent to the biggest of shifts that I have with tapping just straight away. And so I'm like, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then I just like, okay, focus on another aspect of the problem because that's what you do with tapping, right? Yep. But I wasn't using tapping at this time. I was simply using the intentions okay. on their own. And so I just focused on, and I can't remember the specific aspect, but I just focused on another aspect of the problem. And I said, I release all my emotional attachments to that. And I'm like, oh, you're just spontaneous. Yeah, I'm exaggerating the, the movements now, but you know how it happens. It just right, 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 right. opens up and it just moves through and you're just like, oh, there's a shift. And so I just felt that. And then I'm like, that was just confusing to my conscious mind because <laughs> never happened like that. Right, right. And then I just focused on another aspect and it was the same thing. Whoosh, that aspect just moved. And then I'm like, this can't be real. You're just talking yourself into this. This is not, you know, this, <laughs> this cannot work like this. Uh, and then I did it again and it worked again. And I'm like, whoa. And then I, I started to feel my chest. And now, I now know 
as soon as you, of course, there, uh, when you have a problem, you have emotional attachments and you have body disturbances, right? Okay, if you're in your mind, it's only upsetting you because there's emotional attachments, but the emotions are, are processed in the body. Right. And so when there's a, an upsetting emotion, there's a disturbance in energy flow. And so, of course, again, I'm like, yeah, tapping restores flow. There's a disturbance in the body. The tapping restores that back to flow. And then again, I just had the insight, what if we could just use intention? So I'm like, okay, I restore the right energy flow to my chest. And I'm like, just a big, spontaneous, easy, deep breath. And the feeling just had shifted. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is, this is just, you know, still having the judging mind saying, you know, this, this can't be working like this. So I go to my wife and I'm like, okay, I've just been playing around with this thing because now my problem is fine. I'm, I'm feeling fine about my life. I'm feeling okay. I've still got the heel spur. It didn't just miraculously disappear. Okay. It took took a while to work that out, but it was just like the optimism returned, the you know, the potential for achieving goals returned, the possibility that I'm not so bad returned, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I go to my wife, and now she's she's used to this, right? She was the first reluctant participant of my tapping experiments back in 1997 when I studied Gary Craig's videos. Mm -hmm. Back then, she's like, oh, that's ridiculous. But, <laughs> but, but she had, it worked for her. She got over her um, needle fear that she had and it's never returned. Um, but she like, you're not going to get me to do that again. That was back, back in 1997. Like, you're not going to get to do me that, that stupid looking thing again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, but now she's open and so I said I've been doing you know I just trying out something new and it seems to be working for me if you've got a problem we could try it on and she's like yeah yeah so she she focuses on a problem and she's clearly tuned into it and I said okay now say I release all my emotional attachments to this problem and she goes hmm. Like just a beautiful work. And just, I've seen that so many times now. It's just beautiful, you know. It's just like the whole problem dropping off of her. And I'm like, okay, that's two out of two of us. Okay? <laughs> so Slightly so now, larger every, sample size. Every time, you know, yeah, double. We just doubled the sample. <laughs> just double the sample. <laughs> now it's a legitimate finding. I would say, you know, a, a sample size of N equals one is significant if you're the one. You know, but, exactly. but well, absolutely. <laughs> but if will it work for anyone else? Is it going to work for me? You know, same thing I thought when I saw Gary Craig. Like he's getting those results. Can I get those results? And that was the great thing about tapping. It actually worked, and it worked when I used it. And then I was able to use it. You know, and we use it with. You know, my wife uses it. We use it with all of our kids. You know, just about everybody can get results with it. And those who can't probably could if we worked out how they could. Anyway, so next morning I'm on Skype, you know, didn't even, I don't even know if we had Zoom or we weren't. <laughs> anyway, it might have been early days. And uh, so I'm on Skype with this mate of mine from over the other side of the country. And he's like, oh, I've got this family situation. And he's really worried about it and worried about this issue with a family member. And I said, mate, just try this simple statement. And he, he did it and he's like, He's like, whoa, that was palpable. You know, that was the word he used. And um, and he went and had the thing and it the it was shifted. It was different. You know, it didn't have the, the issue. It didn't come up. And so I'm like, okay, that's three out of three. Now, you know, but I have to tell you, it's a bit like when I first learned tapping for the, even now, years later, and I've been doing this, uh, you know, we've we've been studying different types of intentions and finding, you know, th there's several others that work just like these ones do and um, created a practitioner program, got certifications, you know, going, got people in 11 different countries that are certified so far. And, and still I'm like, this should not work. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, then I, I, I just started 
sharing it with I, with colleagues and you know then I started trying it with a few clients and it just like it worked and it worked and it worked yeah. and it worked and it worked and it's like okay it's a thing it's it's real it's not just some you know I am so happy that I'm rich no you're not you know it's not <laughs> like that you know it, it just <laughs> and I'll tell you why it isn't I now know this because most of the time when we do an affirmation type intention we're trying to create an attachment yeah. To something right. that we have an alternative attachment to. Right. Right. And so when we try to attach to go to that, we get wrenched off to this, you know, to the poverty that we're currently experiencing or the or the whatever. Yeah. And so um not so many attached. So I think so many affirmations are based on what we're already attached to. I'm gonna create a statement that's the opposite of what I'm already attached to. And I'm going to hope that I'm some somehow going to make that leap. Exactly. And exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's tr yeah trying trying well trying to leave the the dock without untying the boat. <laughs> well, yeah, and and the good thing is now now I know, and I have had the experience that you can also release your emotional attachments to what you think you want as well, because you're never going to lose anything good. You're only going to lose your attachment to thinking that you need that or that you have to have that or that the world wants will see you as successful if you have that or you'll get approval or love if you have that. Yeah. Um, and, need and is a four-letter word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always saying that. It's when you think you need something. And it, so often when I'm working with someone and you know, whether it's saving a relationship or getting a certain amount of money, it's like, I need this. And it's like, mm, let's, let's step on clearing that need. And people are really resistant. It's like, no, because then I'll let it go. It's like, no, you're going to actually improve your odds of getting it because you don't have that, that false attachment. That's right. That's that, that, that says I have to feel bad until I have it. Well, and, and the attachment of the neediness it's an anxiety and it's also a feeling of being less than of not having of, yep. of whatever so right. um so yeah you release that and then you're free to go forward but then you're like well i don't have to or i can it's like you know and it can be joyful exactly <laughs> as, as opposed to desperate yeah you can have what you want it's just that you, a lot of the things that you think you want you don't really you know <laughs> I did this um, on a car. I know you've talked about cars before and how you got your Porsche and then you're like, this is impractical. So right. you got rid of it. And, and <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you're a practical guy like me. Well, we, um, I had to get a new car, you know, and previously I've always driven big cars and, and my wife had got this little car, you know, and, um, you know, long story, but she'd had a kind of a, a, a more more along the prestige line, but on the low end of that prestige line, I'll just say, you know, I wasn't super whiz bang like our neighbors, but, um, <laughs> but, but it just didn't work for us because it, the car was a lemon. So she got this little car, which the, the mechanic had said, just get one of these, you know, it'll, it, it, it'll do everything you want, you know? And so we got that and I'm like, this is a great car. It's just a great little car, but it's a little car. And I'm a man, you know, and so <laughs> it's my wife's car, you know, and then, <laughs> and then it's a Sheila I'm, car, not a bloke yeah, car. I'm going, to re, I'm, I'm going to replace my car. And so I'm like, well, I got to get another big car. But then part of me is going, why don't you just get another car like Louise's car? You know, you love driving that car, you know. But then I'm like, no, I'm a man. I have to have the big car. So literally, <laughs> literally, this is how it played out. We went down to the car yard. The two cars, I kid you not, were right next to each other on the lot. Well manifested. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, I, I go and sit in this big car and it's just not feeling right. So I'm like, and then and this little voice is saying, get the little car. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't get the little car. I'm a man. So I, I literally, in the car, I, I start tapping. Now, when I first discovered the intentions, I wasn't using tapping. 
but of course, uh, combining them is just beautiful and wonderful and, right. and superior. So, um, so now that's why I call it intention tapping. The, the, the fundamental process of using the intentions, I coined the term intention-based energy process or IEP. And so that's IEP. You can use it on its own without tapping and there's some specific intentions that really work. Then you can use tapping and you can use tapping on its own and then you can combine the two. So I'm literally, I'm in this car, I'm tapping on my finger points like this with, with the thumb. Right. And I'm like, I release all my emotional attachments to I need a big car because I'm a man. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. and I'm like, no, I don't. I want that little car. So then I'm like, okay, I, I release all my, I, I now know I do it on both sides. I release all my emotional attachments to having that little car. Because I want to clear the whole thing, right? Right, 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 right. So, so now, okay, we go for a drive in the little car and it just feels perfect and it feels right. And of course, okay, that's what I'm going to buy. And then I go back and I'm going to negotiate. So, you know, we saved, I don't know, a couple of grand on the car because I love negotiating and everybody <laughs> knows that they whack an extra few thousand on anyway. Um, and I've been happy with that car ever since. And save me at least 20 grand. At least 20 grand. So, you know, you want to save yourself some money? Release your emotional attachments. Yeah. Honestly. Happier and wealthier. <laughs> and better for the planet, actually. Well, there's that too. You know, the big gas guzzler, you know, whatever. Nah. So, yeah. you know, it's good all around. And um, so... The great thing about it is it's still working for me. I'm still using it. I literally was using it this morning on some, you know, I have a normal family and we have issues in our family and we have challenges with each other occasionally. So I had a few things. No, like, no. <laughs> well, you, you know, because, you know, when I came in, I was, I was still, you know, settling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's life, you know, there's... There's always more to learn. There's always more to clear. There's always more to do. I think it's Robert Johnson said, you know, we spend the first half of our life putting stuff in a bag that we carry and then the, the rest of our life trying to empty the bag. Well, I've found something that can empty the bag and it works really well. So when you, the, of course, you've got to notice that you're triggered. You notice that you've, you know, that one of your issues from the bag is actually weighing on you. Yeah. Um, and in that moment, now you can say, if you notice it in your body, you can literally, first of all, just start tapping. As you know, that can work on right. its own. It's right. very potent. And then you can say, I restore the right energy flow to, you know, to my shoulders or to my chest or to my throat or to my stomach or to my breathing. And, and you know, I just did a level one workshop finish this weekend. And again, people are like, they're just blown away by how how consistently that can work. And then, of course, you know the the emotional attachments that are that are connected with that. I think that it's all part of the same process. And you know, mind and body are one. But sometimes we're aware of the mind component, if you like. Yeah. And that's the emotional attachment. And or we're aware of what's going on with the body. That's the body energy disturbance. Yeah. In, in flow or balance. And so we can restore energy flow, and we can restore energy balance. And, you know, sometimes there's too much of, I do believe, you know, that aspect of the, the yin and yang thing, you know, you can have too much yin, not enough yang, too much yang, not enough yin, too much of the wrong kind of energy, you know? So, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I think that was all from one question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so about this intention tapping you do yeah <laughs> no that's awesome i talk about it for hours sure yeah and i you know it's variety is the spice of life and that's the that's the thing is there's so um many great protocols and uh and having spent hours with you co-teaching classes and, and watching you work this magic on folks 
and and seeing the response um, is awesome. So I'm glad to have this opportunity to share this on the YouTube uh, channel so that more people can find out about this. Um, oh, you know, yeah. unless you're one of those folks who's going to get to come who who is at our tap into yes online and then we'll we'll see the uh, the eventual in live and in person one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I still remember one of the ladies who was in that tapping into yes, and people still can access those recordings. I think on on your yes, yes, they're still available online. for sale. Yeah, so they're they're on my website. They can get access to them and and through yours. Um, and there was a lady there that I worked with on a on a um, on a um, childhood trauma, and she's actually working to become one of our practitioners because she's like that changed Made her a believer. That changed me, and that is still that issue is gone. It's no longer triggering her, and it hasn't you know years later. It's still not triggering her. It is years later. You know, it's four years. I think four. three, four years. Three, 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 three. Uh, oh, 2020, So it's three years. Yeah. Three years. Yeah, man. Okay. Time flies. So, anyway, so three years later, and here she is doing this, and um, yeah, that from from her childhood shifted just from a you know a little bit of intention tapping and of course you know we see this with tapping all the time the difference with these intentions really is that when you combine them with the tapping you can move through aspects quickly yeah now i say to people like okay if you say i release all my emotional attachments to my mother okay and 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 you can you can do that because in this approach, you're not tied to some of the rules of EFT where you've got to be specific and you've got to identify the events. No, no, we trust the unconscious to deliver the results. So what's that, what I believe is happening is you're giving the direction to the unconscious mind, which is the wise self, the bigger part of you. Yeah. And, um, and that's going to carry out the, the process. And your wise self is not stupid. It's wiser than you are. So you think, okay, I'll release all my emotional attachments to my mother and everything will happen in an instant. Well, no, you couldn't, you wouldn't even know yourself if you released all of those emotional attachments in one instant. So it what happens? Feel safe. Yeah. Your unconscious mind brings up the aspect which is closest to the surface or the most important one right now. So it's like, oh yeah, her look or what she said to me or the, you know, what she did to me then those events and the issues and so on, they just come out of the unconscious. So you see people and, you know, we train our practitioners just basically to, 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 um, to get people to, to use the thing and then just keep tapping and notice what comes next. Yep. Yep. And so if you're open, then the aspects you need will emerge. You don't have to go cognitively looking for them. You don't have to go, you know, okay, let's do a list of all the events that have ever happened in, in my life and work through them. Um, just start with whatever's upsetting you right now and then release your emotional attachments or restore the energy flow and then keep tapping and notice what aspect comes next. And so um, the unconscious will give you the first aspect about your mother and then you release the emotional attachments of that and then it will release the next aspect. And then you progressively um, release multiple emotional attachments to do with your mother and change your whole yeah. relationship over time. Um, and not that long either. Yeah, not feel the layers long. of the onion. I, 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 I mean, I've seen this many times. I had this one client um, I was working with, and it was happening. So we were tapping, and it's like on some event. Yeah, that this event that happened with such and such, this event that. Oh no! It was actually this thing. Okay, so this event that happened, and then and this event and. No, you know what this it was just triggering this thing that <laughs> it's like every point or two. Yeah. yeah. That got cleared and a deeper thing came up <laughs> afterwards. Like, That's right. Yeah. It's one of the one of the things that that I love so much about about tapping is that the, exactly. the layers of the onion. And yeah, and I, I have the same philosophy of you start with where you're at and you will the, the things will get revealed as opposed to spending you know, all of your time trying to figure out what's the most important thing of, of all these possible. It's like, start where you're at. The, you what needs to come up will come up. Your higher self will. As if you knew cognitively, you know, like yeah. your cognitive 
judging mind, conscious judging mind is the smallest part of you. It can only remember or focus on five to nine things at any one time, you know, and I don't know how people ever do nine, like five is hard for me. So, <laughs> so it's missing so much stuff about what's going on that your unconscious is picking up. Yeah. But, you know, I say there's the conscious judging mind, which is like the bit of the, um, the bit of the iceberg above the water. Then there's the subconscious. Yeah. Now, the subconscious is where you have all your beliefs and your learnings and your habits and your programs, some of which work for you and some of which are just right. a bunch of PS, <laughs> right? Belief systems. And, um, and then so that's the part belief beneath the water. The unconscious mind is the ocean. And so the, the unconscious mind is the part of you that's regulating your heart without you having to think about it. It's regulating your whole body systems. It knows more than you know. In, if you have people in trance, um, their unconscious mind will say, she's not ready to know that yet. So literally, it will protect you from yeah. even being aware of what you can't handle yet in, you know, and, and release that at the time that you are ready. So I find intention tapping is one way of getting yourself ready. Um, yeah. Get ready. We're on get ready, right? <laughs> <laughs> Way to bring that around, Steve. <laughs> Just came up. <laughs> Just came it's up. It's a it's a yeah. beautiful thing. Well, and that and that's why I people like Bessel van der Kolk use tapping is because it creates that safe space for those oh. things to come up that are necessary to address, but most of the time are untouchable. Yeah. And so yeah. when we're doing the tapping, we create that safe space. It's like, okay, now you might be ready to see this thing and to look at this and, uh, and let it go. So I, um, you know, I like, you know, he's talking about trauma and that's of course is, you know, dealing with the, the really difficult stuff that people have, um, have had happen in the past. And, and of course, a lot of us are projecting the past into the present and we're, you know, we're seeing the present through the past and the equivalent that I like to bring up in, in when I'm working with clients is, is kind of a, this equals that equivalence, you know, like I'm in a fight with my partner right now and he, she raises their voice. This is the same as when I got, you know, belted when I was, when, you know, or when they had fights in my family of origin and it ended up becoming violent. And so the nervous system is, of course, doing that. You know, it's like trying to protect you. And so it's reminding you that, you know, loud voices equals violence. But actually, here it doesn't. And so we've got to release the, release the emotional attachment to what was in the past, update the nervous system. So this is not equal to that. This is equal to this. Less, then, then we can be present with this and we can deal with what is here. Um, but yeah, before you were, were talking about that, I was going to say I've, you know, I, I've had with intention tapping, I've had a lot of things that that I thought were my life, like I had adapted to. It was just the way I am. Mm -hmm. That just changed, and some of them have just changed beautifully. And I I now am able to do things that I wasn't able to do before. So I, you know, like when I finished our level one workshop the other day, I said like you know here's what i recommend get out all your beliefs about yourself good bad and ugly um about life the way life is you know and the way etc about the future because boy aren't everybody aren't everybody isn't everybody scared of the future now you know they're projecting all kinds of things that, about you know the way life should be the way things should be just get it all out and start releasing your emotional attachments to it you might be pleasantly surprised that the world is actually a lot kinder than you think it is, you know? <laughs> so you used it on yourself. So, so you're not only the president of intention tapping, you're also a client. Uh, I'm a work in progress, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke for Americans who might remember the hair club for men. But um... uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And on that note. I never uh, saw it. Sorry. <laughs> Some of these jokes are just for me. 
<laughs> so when I do workshops in other countries, and you may find this too, if you make a, some joke that's a cultural reference, it's like crickets. I was telling, all right. <laughs> I was telling that there's there's the Dalai Lama joke, which I I David Lake and I used to use this in our workshops all the time, and uh, I told it the other day, and there was a you know a crazy uh, silly TV guy who actually told this joke to the Dalai Lama. And the Dalai Lama, of course, because of the language differences, didn't really get it. But he did laugh and he was gracious. And I think the guy himself ended up looking a little bit, a little bit foolish, you know, for doing it because he but but it's a great joke. And I'll, I'll share it if you don't know it. Have you, have I, you heard it? Well, you have to tell it now because people are going to be like, <laughs> I know. OK, so the Dalai Lama goes to a hot dog stand. And oh, says, this one. Oh. Make me one with everything. And so the guy does, you know, make me one with everything. So he's, you know, here he is, hands it over. And the Dalai Lama takes it and, and, and he's, he's waiting. And the guy says, what are you waiting for? He says, I'm waiting for my change. And the guy says, change comes from within. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Some people know the first part, but they don't know the second part. You obviously heard both parts. Well, I've, I, I read for because I, I actually did a... Uh... Uh, one of my YouTube videos called being one with everything. And I start off with yeah. the, the kind of guy goes to the hot dog stand. So it's making me one with everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and on that, that note, note, on that flat note, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> so we used to use humor very effectively in our work, but <laughs> that provocative energy therapy. Uh, anyway, well, thank you for this uh, opportunity to share uh, intention tapping with, uh, with folks. And so the folks can find out more. There'll be links in the information box below and at uh, tapwithbrad.com forward slash Steve. And you'll find, uh, more information about intention tapping and trainings that you have coming up and all that good stuff. And, um, yeah. Well, thank you, Brad. I really appreciate the opportunity to, you know, spread the word and you know this one thing that you've been doing for a long time of course and that's why so many people are following you because you're always putting good stuff out to the world for people to take advantage of it and make it accessible so i, I really appreciate that um i do want to say the the simple version of it which is the simple self-help version anybody can use and you know part of my mission is to like yours is to make this accessible to people um there's a simple version and there's you know there's a more complex version and our practitioners you know they they learn a lot about about paying attention to people and following the energy and working with energy and, and stuff like that and how to target the intentions but if the listeners just have a go with i release all my emotional attachments to this problem and just combine that with gently tapping on the points while you just notice what comes and then if you notice there's a disturbance in your body, you know, whether it's, you know, in the head, shoulders, neck, stomach, diaphragm, whatever, just say, I restore the right energy flow to this area or to this feeling. And then just keep tapping and just notice what happens. And usually within a few seconds or sometimes it can take a little bit longer, but if you just wait, then you'll feel a shift. And then that aspect moves. Next, next aspect comes in, keep doing the process and you might save yourself 20 years of therapy. I only have 20 more to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a good plan. All right. All right, my friend. It's uh, been great chatting with you as always. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers. <laughs>